All right, guys, let's have some fun here. So as you all know, J.D. Vance has been a disastrous VP pick. He's the most unpopular VP pick in decades. Dan Quayle was more popular than him, and that guy was notoriously a mess. Sarah Palin is way more popular than him. I mean, J.D. Vance is underwater. He's more unfavorable than favorable. Sarah Palin at her worst was still like plus 15 over water at this point, right? So, man, bad move from Trump. Apparently, Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, and his idiot sons convinced him to do it. Thank you, guys. You guys are fucking geniuses. We really appreciate it. So, I love this because now, now you even see people like Ben Shapiro fleeing the sinking ship, okay? So, Ben Shapiro came out the other day. This is as soon as we learned that Vance was going to be the pick. As a friend put it, Vance is truly a fuck it, we ride pick from Trump demonstrates real confidence and shows that he wants a bulldog. Vance is certainly that. In terms of pure IQ and speaking ability, Vance is the best candidate Trump could pick. Best in speaking ability? The guy has the charisma of a dirty diaper. He has negative charisma. He's a little doughboy. He's a little doughboy. The idea is pure high IQ. Mmm, doesn't feel like that to me. Also, he's a attack dog. Really? His criticisms don't seem very good or biting in the interviews that he's done, and he keeps shoving his fucking foot in his mouth, and people are going through his past and realizing he said a bazillion things that piss off, like, the majority of Americans. But look, the first part is true. When the pick of Vance was built on the overconfidence that, look, we're not losing this race, and the reason they felt like that is because at the time, Biden was still in. He was being incredibly defiant. It was looking like he was not going to step aside no matter what. Um, he was down in the polls, sliding even more down in the polls. Uh, didn't Trump just had the assassination attempt, right? And so he felt like, fuck it, let's, let's, let's go for it. Who gives a shit? I'm not going to pick somebody who theoretically, there's an argument that they help the ticket. The reason Vance doesn't help the ticket is he's from Ohio. You're already going to win Ohio. Ohio's gone. It's a red state now. It's over. You're going to win Ohio. So why would you pick Vance? He doesn't help you in any measurable way. He doesn't make up for any uh, deficiency on the ticket. Like, for example, Trump is viewed as kind of an extremist, uh, an election denier, has abortion problems. Okay, so why don't you pick somebody who's not an extremist? Somebody who can uh, appeal to suburban women, for example. Somebody who's less extreme than you on abortion, for example. He, he didn't do it. Vance is actually worse than Trump on abortion. It was just, okay. So, but they, fuck it, we ride. He was, oh, this is great pick, great pick, Don. Great pick, yeah, totally, bro, great pick. This was Ben Shapiro at the time. Now, what has happened since then? Well, let's see what uh, old Benny boy is saying now. Speaking of errors that Republicans are going to have to avoid. So, J.D. Vance is the vice presidential nominee for President Trump. Now, if you had a time machine, if you go back two weeks, would he have picked J.D. Vance again? I doubt it. I think he probably would have picked somebody <laughs> like Glenn Youngkin from Virginia. <laughs> Fuck it, we ride. Pure IQ and speaking ability. The best possible pick from Trump, bro. Look at Trump. I'm going to go back in time. What do you pick this guy? I'm going to go no. I'm going to say no. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, it's so good. But by the way, this is how you know the left is sort of beating the shit out of him right now. Like I have to say, 2015, 2016, Donald Trump, he, he was winning the internet and the meme wars. Right now, the lefties are cooking hard, bro, in the meme section. I mean, you got 82-year-old grandmas in Cleveland going, does this, does this boy fuck couches? I think he fucks couches. Like, he's just getting hammered. He's getting clobbered over the head, bro. Instead, he went with J.D. Vance feeling, because he was right, that at the time he had a very solid advantage in the race against Joe Biden. That's well, right. again, J.D. is super smart. He also has a long history of public commentary. Uh, so back in 2021... Uh, this is the sort of hot controversy of the day from the Democrats. Back in 2021, J.D. Vance was appearing on Tucker Carlson's show back when Tucker's show was on Fox. And he ripped into what he called the childless cat lady culture of the Democrats, including Kamala Harris. What I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I love, OK, I just I can't deal with the, how dumb that argument is. The idea that, oh, if you don't have kids then you're guaranteed to what? Want the destruction of the earth? Want bad policies in place? What the fuck are you talking about? By the way, from their own perspective, I can find 
millions of single people who are very conservative. They would agree with those policies. I could also find millions of married people who agree with my politics, lefty politics. What your status is, what your relationship or marriage status is, or your status vis-a-vis -vis having kids or not, has no outcome. No, no, it's not determinative, ter determinative in any way, shape, or form in terms of what your ideas are, what policies you prefer. They could not, they're not even close to linked. And also, of course, I have to point out, because this gets me every time, we're run by the corporate oligarchs, you know, the childless cat ladies. He does realize that we know who the corporate oligarchs are, right? Like, we know who they are. They are not childless cat ladies. So guys, in one fell swoop, he managed to piss off single men, single women, stepmoms, and stepdads. Because he doesn't believe stepmom or stepdad is, is an actual thing. He's only, your biological kid's the only ones that count, bro. You're actually not mom or dad if you're stepmom or stepdad, bro. And of course, the single people, just childless cat ladies fucking running us into a ditch, bro. Yeah, this is why nobody fucking likes you. This is why nobody likes you. All right. I agree that our country has moved away from caring about the future because too few Americans care about having children. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Does he hear himself? Listen again. I agree that our country has moved away from caring about the future because... Our country has moved away from caring about the future. <laughs> okay. The only people who have moved away from caring about the future, it's you guys. And it's you guys because you all still deny climate change or say it's real, but there's nothing we can do about it. Those are the people who do not care about the future. The climate science deniers are the ones who don't care about the future. They want to burn fossil fuels until fucking the last penguin in Antarctica is on fire, okay? But no, of course, it's the Democrats, it's the childless Catholics, they don't care about the future. Why can't it be that, look, these people have a different idea of how to make the future better. They don't agree with me, but they have a different idea of how to try to make the future better. He can't say that. He can't bring himself to say that. Too few Americans care about having children. I totally agree with that. However... This description that J.D. Vance is using, is that politically smart or is it politically damaging? Now, again, he doesn't have a time machine. He can't go back and undo something he said. Now, look at the kid gloves, bro. <laughs> three and a half years ago. With that said, Democrats are, of course, using this as a club with which to beat Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. They're trying to run up the gender gap. So one of the things to understand about this election cycle. No, 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 no. It's not the Democrats. No, oh, they're trying to run up the gender gap here. They're trying to do identity politics. No Democrat said Dickie McGee's acts about any fucking childless cat ladies or married people or whatever. No, that was J.D. Vance said that shit. So you see the double standard here? A Republican can say the most identity-driven bullshit of all time, and if a Democrat or the left responds, it's, why are you talking about identity, bro? I wasn't saying shit about it. You brought it up. You brought it up. Why does it not count when you bring it up? This is all, the left always does identity politics, always does identity politics. Donald Trump's entire campaign in 2015, 16, and in 2020, it was white identity politics. That's what all the immigration fear-mongering is. That's what it is. They're destroying the country. They're destroying the country, these immigrants. We're, we're like a third world nation. We're like a third world nation. We had all these people coming in here from mental institutions and prisons. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? Is Donald Trump super afraid of Norwegian immigrants? Is that what it is? Or is it a different kind of immigrant? Is it maybe a different, slightly different skin color that leads to his fear mongering? Stop with the bullshit. Republicans love identity politics. And now it's not just white identity politics. It's also like a weird kind of identity politics that uh, lionizes like straight people who are married with their own biological kids. Everybody else can go fuck off in J.D. Vance's mind. The gender gap is larger than it has ever been in the history of American politics in all likelihood. Males overwhelmingly vote for Trump. Females, particularly single females, overwhelmingly vote for Biden. And so they're going to try to find some sort of wedge to claim that all Republicans are sexist. And this is the wedge they're using today. So in other words, he says something incredibly stupid. He says something totally and utterly identity driven. He basically says fuck off to everybody who's not straight, Married with their own biological kids. And you somehow flip it like, look at the Democrats being divisive, bro. Look at the Democrats being divisive. But the big point is, he can't even pretend like it's not politically damaging. He's acknowledging that it's politically damaging. When you've lost the full-throated defense of even somebody like Ben Shapiro, bro, you're on the ropes. Because his whole job is right-wing propaganda. His whole job is to play defense for the Republicans. And even he's struggling to cover your ass. And what did J.D. Vance do? He doubled down on it and tripled down on it. 
All right, bro. Good luck with that. Good luck. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.